still can be decomposed, decomposed into the time part and the spatial part, where qij is the three-dimensional spatial matrix defined this hypersurface. So the important point of ADM is the important ADM is given any given any any G new mu, any any matrix that you can do this actually you can do this uh, do this decompose do this decomposition and this is always doable which is geometrical I mean what for, for, for example for example I've given you a pen then you can always slide it into what small cylinder and, and stack up the small cylinder to form the pen again you have thousands of ways to do it you can slide it particular I mean parallel to the plane and then stack up again to form the, or you can slide in this way. And the whole idea of proving for covariant is saying that, well, the pen is here, space time is here. It doesn't matter how I slide it. If I slide this way, then, then every, every slide will, will be a triangle, will be, will be, will be, will, will be a cylinder tilt. But when I stack up, I still get a what? I still get a, uh, I still get a, um, I still get a, uh, I still get this back, uh, this pen back. So this is the whole idea of uh, ADM decomposition. And one can show that for any matrix, you can decompose into this form. Low loss of generation, low loss of information. So now you can count the degree of freedom. This guy G I J has now I J is the spatial matrix has a. One two, one, two, three has six degree of freedom. And then Ni is one, two, three has three degree of freedom. N is the lapse function is one degree of freedom. So, so six plus one plus one, six plus one plus three equals 10. So it's the original degree of freedom contained in G new mu. That means uh, this, is, uh, this is always doable. The whole point of, the whole point of doing this is such that I can separate, I can separate from Hilbert Lagrangian, the, Hil the Einstein Hilbert Lagrangian, which is, this, which is very simple, do a Lagrangian transformation. For Hilbert Lagrangian, actually, is just what? It's just. And I can I can do a little I can do a the H is just equal P Q dot minus L. I can do a little transformation and obtain the Hamiltonian. Well, this is the idea. And then once I have the Hamiltonian, then I know how to evolve this hypersurface from this time to this time. That's the idea. But however, this idea takes more than 70 years for people to come to realize. Uh, I'm sorry, what does it mean with the component dt in the second term? Normally we have one component for dt, and here we have like uh, more than one. Does it say it assumes more than a single time direction? No, just one, one component dt, just one dt. And the next? This is ni times dt. It's just a simple, this is just a, this is a simple Pythagoras theorem. You move upward, by n d t and move sideways tangentially by n a d t and then this uh, the square of this is this uh, is this link yeah do I answer your question or uh, no, I'm just wondering if I can interpret this metric like the usual the usual one we encounter something d t square and then plus uh, d x i j k oh. If n equal to one, n i equal to n i equal to zero, then this is equal to one. Then you just uh, this will just equal to minus d t square plus d x square plus d y square plus d x d z square. So you just go back to the Minkowski space for n equal to one and q i j equal to one and n i equal to zero. Then and you just get back the Minkowski space. It's okay? Yeah. 
Yeah, you're welcome to interrupt uh, because this because I think you guys must be a particle particle theorist. Right? Okay, anyway. So now this is the Hamiltonian constraint that uh, take Diva almost ten years to work out from this. Begin with this, begin with the Hilbert Einstein action. And you do the decomposition according to this, uh, according, according to this matrix. Well, by that time, actually, okay, I jumped too fast. By that time, Dirac's paper was published in 1958. The first people achieved to get Hamiltonian actually is Dirac and, and another guy called Skinner, who's in, who is in in Canada. But Skinner makes some mistake and Dirac get the correct mistake. But however, however, he do not have a have a have a, have a ADM decomposition. But however, but at the end he get the correct Hamiltonian. Uh, sorry, he get the correct Hamiltonian. Uh, uh, just using ADM method, the correct Hamiltonian is easy. You just uh, you just do this the the transformation. The important is what is this? In doing this rejoinder transformation, that means um, uh, then I, I lose my motion. This is analogous, okay? The real relativity here is a function. This is my this is my uh, this is my Q. This is my Q dot. This is my P momentum can, canonical momentum P, and then because they are tensor, so those pi, I call pi i j, and then this this is the tensor to the Q i j dot. So you plug in this formula, you plug in formula, and and you know what R is, then you work out after years years of calculation, and people actually spend more than 20 or 30 years to, to calculate. Anyway, finally, <laughs> yeah, just to make myself clear, your IJ here wrong from 1 to 3. Well, IJ from 1 to 3, yeah, space width. Yeah. But yeah. how did you choose time? Because you have a hypersurface, but then it's a unique time now. Um, okay, let me don't, don't confuse you now. In this picture, in this picture, there's no time. Well, well you chose a time, that's why you have No, 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 I, I don't chose a time. And this is actually to be precise. This is a variation. Okay. It's a variation of, okay. the variation, the Hamiltonian is P, Q, dot. I mean, usually, usually in, in the usual classical mechanics, but you do it, I mean, in a very strict sense, it's P, and variation minus L. Okay. Now, so, and this is called quantum variable of, uh, of Q. Okay. Now, in the sense, I don't have a, now I give it the notion of time at this point. Well, but <coughs> the whole Hamiltonian formalism is dependent on the choice of time. No, no, no. Um, can I ask a question similar to his question? You, you said variation, but you have to vary with respect to something, right? Otherwise, it becomes differential, I, uh, infinitesimal okay. quantity. I, I have two slides. I have two. Okay. Yeah. I have a space to matrix, and then and then I and then I and then I vary, and then I have another another matrix, and then I compare, compare, and drag back the field. At the same point, and then compare the difference. This is called my delta q. Okay, so the, your delta q is infinitesimally small. Now. In infinitesimal small uh, difference in configuration well, at the same point. Back to what you call the this ADM three plus one decomposition. Yeah, yeah. It implies the separation of time. In pi, so the separation the of time. In pi, the separation of time concept. Yes. Yeah. 
So what is that? Because who can decide that? Okay. The ABM, okay, the, the important point is, as I say, I mean, given, given a manifold like this, I don't care how you slide. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you slide. Different slides will have different time. Okay. Different slides will have different time. That is probably okay. okay. But, but from now on, or later on, well, this is a repeat of ordinary picture. From later on, I will introduce our own way of time. Okay. okay. This is their point of view. Okay. Given you a space time, okay, I slide it, right? The the orthogonal, con the orthogonal direction, the orthogonal direction of that line is called time. Okay. Well, that there's is still fit. a problem, right? You can say I can slice it any way I want, but causality enters in some point, at some point. But if they can, they can, time they, 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 they prove that, they, they prove that everything is correct, okay. Yeah, you're right, okay. But anyway, they, they prove that after years, years of working on those, Although now it's 2013, there's still a book of Russian. They question the, the modality of this uh, of this procedure. But however, I think I think uh, it's so consistent at least uh, from our point of view. But however, now this is not the this is not the main point. The main point is exactly I mean, what's time in this picture? I mean, what is time evolution in this picture? Okay, now. Here you get the Hamiltonian constraint and momentum constraint. This momentum constraint is just like Gauss law in QEV. That generate what? That generate corresponding QIJ transformation. Now, but however, the constraint, because H, no, you see that. Hamiltonian is it become a constraint, become and also it goes. Well, it's a constraint, so it's equal to something which is zero. zero. And it is, the whole point is zero everywhere. You see, it's difficult. Hamiltonian is zero everywhere. Okay. But what's the function of Hamiltonian? Hamiltonian is to evolve, right? To give you time evolution. But how can something zero give you evolution? That's nonsense, right? But on so it, so people say, well, this is a good form because it's zero. I can I can evolve at any time at any time direction. That's the advantage. And then I say this is bullshit. That's what we want to point out. I mean that means the evolution, Hamiltonian is zero. That means give low evolution. If you want to evolve it, then evolution is arbitrary. If it's arbitrary, it's not physical. But however. The community are very happy with this. I don't understand. Which is uh, which is obvious object. But however, before that, before we come to this uh, this important condition, we check the Dirac algebra. Well, the, the all this constraint have to satisfy Dirac algebra, just like just like Young Mill. I mean, all these uh, we have Gauss law, and then the Gauss law the commutator of two Gauss law has equal to a, has to equal to a. Uh, a, another another Gauss law commutator things the blah 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 things like that. So so we check <coughs> now it turns out it turns out the momentum constraint is indeed indeed has the correct transformation, generally <coughs> derivative. And the momentum and Hamiltonian constraint also correct. Modular modular equation motion. But however the two commutators the Hamiltonian you see that Depends on a what? Depends on GIJ the matrix. That means, well, for D, if it's D algebra, if this is a D algebra, form a D algebra, that means uh, the that generate the corresponding gauge group. If this is a D algebra, this should be a structure constant instead of a structure function. So that means the algebra itself is sick. That means the algebra in technical terms, do not have a what? Do not have a close DRST algebra upon quantization. That's the reason why people keep on fail. Okay, now, but however, if you look at the momentum constraint, the momentum constraint does generate the correct gauge, uh, three dimensional diffeomorphism invariant gauge transformation. For example, QIJ with the momentum, with the momentum 
constraint just like just corresponding like the corresponding Gauss law in QED is just the lead derivative of uh, just the lead derivative of uh, just the lead derivative of QIJ and so as uh, so as uh, pi IJ the canonical momentum. So let me let me be emphasize again. Now we have to come to the important coin after after all this preparation. After all this preparation, we have a Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is zero, and also, actually, more technically, the Hamiltonian is quadratic in momentum. Also, have electric mode. For example, people like Chow Ching Tong and Witten, they spend the whole well, more than thirty years to prove that with this negative mode, Hamiltonian is still positive. That is the so-called positive energy proof. They spend the whole life in proving that. <coughs> but this proof is useless from our point of view. You should subtract this guy off. And then Hamiltonian was automatically positive. Well, I talked to Chow Ching Tung, but then but by that time, uh, maybe maybe my language is not that mature by the time I talked to him, but he doesn't believe me. But anyway, so let's come back to the old question. What's time? Point curry said time is something, is a parameter, is a, a single parameter that to make mechanics simple. You think, for example, if, uh, if, the, if, this, if, if I throw away, if I throw away this, uh, this pointer, the pointer will have a trajectory, and then you use a time function to, 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 to describe this trajectory is easy, the mechanics. If you do not use the idea of time, then it's very difficult to describe the motion of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, of this band. So Poincaré said time is to make mechanics simple. And X and T and label have no physical meaning. Space time is dynamical general metric field. In field theory, in field theory, simultaneous space should be defined by field component, not by coordinate time parameter. This is an important question. For example, up to now, after after 50 years of development of modern field theory, we do not know how to normalize the wave function for a field theory. For, Q, for, for, for example, for QED. How to normalize the wave function? We don't. Because to normalize the wave function, you have to choose a time slide. You have to normalize the wave function at some time t, and they integrate over all space. That's called normalization. However, 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 <coughs> simultaneity, according to the special rule, this simultaneity is, is coordinate dependent. If you normalize the wave function at this point, and then you move it to another, using another coordinate, the wave function will normalize again. So, you see, so in part time model, for example, in QCD, in part time model, the wave function is only normalized with respect to what? With respect to the infinite momentum plane. Because if you transform away from the, if you transform away from infinite momentum from plane, the parton model is very complicated, and then you lost the parton part interpretation of the box. So that's the reason why we have to choose, why we have to show an infinite momentum plane to normalize the parton wave function. Because because in field theory, simultaneous thing should be labeled uh, is, is by coordinate. We say this is not quite right. We should use, instead of using coordinate, we should use field component to do it. If you use field component, if the field component are invariant, then you can really get normalization of uh, normalization wave function. This is the problem with the graph, so-called covariance of, uh, of, of vacuum. So, here comes the major point. The temporal information is carried by the spatial matrix already. I I I I I elaborate this point. This please remember it. I will, I will elaborate this point in the next page. Now let me highlight again. Highlight again. What's the problem? What's the problem in general physics? Namely, the Hamiltonian general dynamical evolution. Namely, for example, given you any any any. Uh, Phase wave variable Q, then Poisson bracket of Q with H is your Q dot. Keep the evolution. But on the other hand, Hamiltonian 
is a first class constraint and is equal to zero, like Gauss law. That means the symmetry, the time symmetry in general is a gay symmetry. Well, <coughs> we are getting old every day. So we are not gay. You know that, right? <laughs> so time cannot be gay. But however, the Hamiltonian of general relativity tells you that on one hand it gives evolution. On the other hand, it's a first class constraint that the evolution actually is not a real evolution, it's just a gauge transformation. That means what? That means time has to be gauge transformation. But we know we're getting old every day and we cannot be gauge transformation. So that means one has to solve the dual rule, we solve the dual rule of the Hamiltonian. That means uh, we have to decide whether the Hamiltonian has to be the Hamiltonian, not to be the Hamiltonian. This is the, that's the question. Whether, whether these objects should be interpreted as a Hamiltonian or not. So. Um, is there any questions so far? I mean, I mean, this is the preparation. I mean, the West are the, now these are the conceptual preparation. The West are the, the West will be, will be, will be, will be uh, technical. Yeah, I still have a question. You, you have this uh, relation with respect to some parameter. That parameter must be George's uh, coordinate time. Uh, yeah, some, somehow <coughs> the chosen coordinate time, even that yeah. cho choice is arbitrary, right? Yeah. Some, some normal direction between two neighbor slices. Okay, I think I think the very spirit, the very spirit, the, the very spirit of general relativity is everybody can have their own watch. No watch is special. That's the spirit of uh, you can use your own watch to count time. He she has your own watch to count time. And that is the very spirit of general relativity. So, however, this very very spirit of general relativity actually contain lots of what lots of problem that we have to resolve it. That's the that's the that's the problem I want to discuss. Okay. Well, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, the uh, is the choice of constraint unique, or is just a matter of convenience? No, no. <laughs> there's no choice. Yeah. The given you is a function. Just put forth to work it out. Uh -huh. yeah. Then you always get those constraints. Yeah, you always get those constraints. Yeah, no way out. But, uh, <coughs> No, that's case fixing. No, no, no. In QE, there's only one constraint, the Gauss law. I thought the constraint can have different choice. No, no, no. As long as you can get rid of the uh, actual the redundant of the freedom. But this is a, also, this is a <laughs> op, op, oxymoron. You know, this is an oxymoron in case concerning gauge theory. In QED, there are only one constraint, namely Gauss law. Gauss law is the constraint that generates U1 gauge transformation that corresponding to conservation of charge. But however, however, you have four components, A0, A1, A2, A3. So what are you going to do? So we have a gauge fix. For example, you can use Lorentz gauge deep dot AU0 or Coulomb gauge deep dot or, or gradient <coughs> AU0, blah, 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 things like that. That's called gauge fixing. It's very different constraint. Okay. And actually, we advocate after this work, we advocate <coughs> gauge fixing procedures has to be very careful. I mean, people, I mean, after 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 we work out all this canonical structure, we begin we begin to come back to question almost every basic question of our gauge theory. If you want to talk about that, I can. I'm very happy to talk to you on that. So, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm I have a question. Time. I have a comment and a question. The comment yeah. is that I would not restrict your time, oh. but for people behind me, okay. uh, they are also not restricted. Okay. So my question, or is that there is a question about the Hamiltonian formalism itself, because yeah. this is like zero xin xin xiao. Hamiltonian formalism implies time evolution, and that's an experience that humans had. 
uh, you know, in the 16th century, in the 17th and 18th century, and mathematically formulating the, the action principle, this and that. So the choice of Hamiltonian formalism implies time evolution. So what is the cause and effect in, in this kind of a the theorization? No. Getting philosophical. No. If you look back, <laughs> no, no, no. If you look back at this historical <coughs> development and all this philosophy, okay, let me, give me, give, give me just one minute to talk about history. So it's Newton first discovered FUMA. So Lagrange become very upset <coughs> because he think Newton get the law of, uh, <laughs> get the truth from the law already. <coughs> So what he do, do, because Newton used geometry to prove FUMA, so okay, why don't I just give up geometry and use algebraic formula? So he developed his Lagrangian method. Then comes Hamilton. Hamilton said, well, this Lagrange formalism has to evolve in space-time. Has to have, the trajectory has to be in configuration space. Can I talk about evolution in phase space? So in, huh, in, so in canonical formalism, evolution is not called evolution, it's called canonical transformation. That means the change of things among the change of the change of the phase space variable among each other. It's no, there's no concept of time. You don't, that's the, I think this is very important philosophically. I mean, that is the reason why Hamilton developed his. Uh, it's a, it's a relate it's change of relation between the phase variable by the Hamiltonian. There's no, not necessary to talk about time. Forget about time. For example, I, I talk about for example, I can do a canonical formalism for the for the stock market uh, index and uh, and money supplies. So they have relation. And then from that relation, you have, you have a Hamiltonian for that, then you can see how they vary. There's no time in it. So this is the important, I think this is the important advantage of Hamiltonian formalism. You, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need a, or so-called sometimes Hamiltonian formalism is called what? It's called background independent. Because you do not need a space-time <coughs> background to, to do the evolution. But you have a Lagrangian, you have to talk about, you have to do your field operator, you have to do your manipulation operator in space time. <coughs> well, look, okay. it's yeah. true that the Hamilton Jacobi equation does not define time, but it does involve time, so. Yeah, it involves a notion of time, but. Like, actually, that's the core of your. Dual, yeah, I, uh, yeah I, dual, I'll, dual I'll come issues. back to time. What, 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 I have to, I have to <coughs> differentiate the difference of, the different nature of time in, in, in about one minute, okay? So, here's just a cartoon. Okay. So, <laughs> this is low time, because Hamiltonian constraint is low time, and then speed low time, because of Hamiltonian. This is actually the famous, uh, famous uh, idiom by uh, John Wheeler, after looking at uh, Hamiltonian structure. Okay, now, uh, now, time is to, okay, let me co make the correction of facts again. Then, point correct time is to make mechanics simple, time cannot be gauged. So, we, we need, that means we need something uh, something more solid. And then, the hey, area Hamiltonian is quadratic in momentum. It cannot generate correct gauge transformation. This is important. For example, Gauss law is deep dot E. E is the canonical momentum of A. It's first order in canonical momentum. But in Hamiltonian, in GR, Hamiltonian constraint is quadratic in momentum. And for people in classical mechanics, they don't care. They just go ahead and do it. That's the reason why I always said that. If you insist in classical mechanics, you never really understand general relativity. You need quantum mechanics. Then, because in quantum mechanics, you have a gauge invariant wave function. With a gauge invariant wave function, you can prove that if some constraint is quadratic in momentum, that you do not generate corresponding gauge symmetry. I think this is extra. I don't. I, this so 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 because it's so technical. I didn't. I didn't weigh down. I mean the detail. But anyway, trust me. So that means the if you believe in this, that means the temporal gauge symmetry should not be there. That means for coordinate covariance of general.